There are few questions of greater importance than the question of how the universe, including ourselves, came to be. The conclusion arrived at reaches far beyond the theoretical sphere and shapes one's all-encompassing worldview, the perception of life's meaning, purpose, and destiny. Nearly everyone would agree that the universe is tremendously well-ordered and sophisticated. The disagreement is over how it became this way. Some have concluded that it evolved through random material processes over a long period of time following a Big Bang explosion. Others have concluded that the universe came to be through the intention and power of a creator as expressed in the Bible. While some claim that the Bible's description of creation contradicts science, others say it merely contradicts falsehoods mislabeled as science. There are four key components to the origin of our universe. Time, energy, space, and matter. All of which are alluded to in the opening statement of the Bible. In the beginning, time. God created energy. The heavens, space. And the earth, matter. Regarding time, in the beginning, the Bible states that there was a definite beginning of the universe. Less than a hundred years ago, the general consensus in the scientific community was that the universe had no beginning, being eternally existent. Yet now, it is a commonly accepted fact that the universe had a beginning in time agreeing in this respect with what the Bible had said all along. Regarding energy, in the beginning, God created. An immeasurable amount of energy would be required to bring such a vast universe into being. So what was the source of this energy? Cosmic evolutionists theorize that the universe began when a so-called singularity exploded. Yet have we ever observed an explosion produce order? This aside, the conventional Big Bang theory presents an effect, a bang, without first presenting a plausible cause. When an explosion occurs, the question which follows is, what caused the explosion? Even if one assumes that there was a singularity before the beginning of the universe, it could only remain in a static, unchanged state unless acted upon by an external force, according to the law of inertia. Therefore, an inanimate singularity could not suddenly explode on its own to begin the creation. Yet a creator with a mind and a will could suddenly act to begin the creation. The initial cause of the universe must have had boundless creative power to work with, which is how the Bible describes God. Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen says of God, You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Regarding space, in the beginning God created the heavens. The discovery which led scientists to recognize that the universe had a beginning was the discovery of the expansion of space, which implies that in the past there was a beginning point of space and time. Though this was discovered less than a century ago, 
the Bible revealed the expansion of the heavens 26 centuries earlier. The writers of Scripture speak of how the Creator stretched out the heavens in the past tense and also in the present tense. Jeremiah wrote that God stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Similarly, Isaiah wrote that God stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Regarding matter, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible reveals that all matter, including the earth itself, was formed from that which is invisible. The book of Hebrews speaks of how the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Since the universe, with all the matter it contains, had a beginning, prior to that beginning, it did not exist. It therefore makes sense that matter was not made of things which are visible. The alternative explanation is that matter first originated from pre-existing materials, which is an obvious contradiction. When it is stated that God created the heavens and the earth, the objection that often comes in reply is, well, who created God? Yet if anything exists now, then something must be eternal. Otherwise, we're stuck with the dilemma of, how could anything jump into existence on its own from absolutely nothing? And since the universe had a beginning, it is obviously not eternal. So there must be something which is eternal without a beginning which began the universe. God, as revealed in the Bible, fits this profile perfectly. In Psalm 90 it says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The Creator is described as eternal, from everlasting. A basic principle used in investigative work is to find a cause which fits with the effect in question, a cause which adequately explains the effect observed a suspect capable of the act. Much can be learned about the cause of an effect simply by observing the characteristics of the effect itself. There is a direct link between the quality of a product and the ability of that which produced it. Because the quality of a product cannot exceed the ability of that which caused it. As examples, every musical masterpiece reveals a master composer behind it with exceptional musical skill. Though none of us have met Mozart who lived over 200 years ago, he is recognized as a musical genius through the quality of the music he produced. No one would conclude that a musical masterpiece could be composed by someone lacking musical knowledge. Similarly, artwork reveals the ability level of the artist who produced it. A glance at a picture gives a pretty good clue as to whether it was drawn by a young toddler or by someone a bit further on in years and ability. A very advanced computer program requires not just any computer programmer, but specifically a programmer 
with very advanced programming skills. The product quality always reflects the nature of that which produced it. So what does this delicately ordered universe reflect as its likely cause? Is the physical world the result of an unintentional explosion or of an intelligently calculated plan? Could a 100-piece puzzle be put together by someone who is asleep? How much less could an unconscious Big Bang assemble a magnificently intricate universe? A conscious mind is a necessity for assembling any integrated system. Therefore, a cause with the attribute of consciousness fits with an effect which would require conscious effort to produce. There's good reason to suspect a wise and powerful creator of creating a universe which required both great wisdom and power to construct. The know-how to design it and the power to bring it into being. Jeremiah 10 verse 12 states, God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. Thank you.